Hey everybody, this is Mitch Freeburn, strength conditioning coach for the Belleville Senators, and this is Fit with Mitch Mondays. On today's episode, we're going to talk about warm-up sequencing. So, one thing we see with new athletes coming into the organization is they have lots of great tools in terms of knowing what to do to prepare themselves for the ice. However, where they get lost sometimes is the sequencing and how they go about going through this warm-up routine. Now, the best part about being a warm-up routine is there's more than one way to roam. There's no one way that's better than another, and you can find what works best for you and custom tailor individual pieces while working through the general framework that I've laid out. Now, what I have laid out here is just a sample warm-up of what we would take our players through for a pre-practice routine on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'm gonna walk you through the general framework, but you can feel free to take a screenshot if you wanna try and go through this on your own. So what we want to do with every warm-up is we want to start with some sort of thermal component. In our thermal component, what we want to do is our goal is to get warm and get blood flowing throughout the body. Everyone's heard the common metaphor, if you stretch a cold rubber band, the rubber band's going to break. Same thing applies to the human body. We want to get warm to mobilize those tissues, create some blood flow and some heat, and then we can build on the body from there. So, what does our thermal warm look like? We can be as creative as we want depending on the resources we have. We can have a stationary bike, airdyne, rower, etc. We can go for a jog outside. It's whatever you want to do to just get a little bit of a sweat going just to start your warm up routine. So, once we're done proceeding through the thermal warm up, we're going to move into some more ground based work, what I call it. We're going to start with some fascial work, so some tissue mobilization. We're going to jump on a lacrosse ball, a foam roller. What we're doing is we're just working on getting those innate tissues moving so that way we can continue to build on and progressing our mobility as we proceed through the warm up. Next, after we proceed through our fascia work, we're gonna go into our active mobility series. The key here is we wanna move in multiple planes. One thing is we can't hit every single aspect of the body in a single day or your warm up just draws on too long. This entire warm up should take you about 15, 20 minutes and then you can go on and skate, proceed with your day. So back into the mobility series, we're gonna move in multiple planes. We're gonna start with an airplane, just something simple, open the hips up. Just a QL reach, just some more lateral work, stretch and lengthen that lateral line musculature into some ankle mobs. So hockey players in those hockey skates, they have that dorsiflexion that is always sustained with being in the skate boot. So when we're on a more ground base without the skate, we just like to take them through that entire range of motion and keep that range through the ankle as best we can. And then lastly, we're just gonna work through our hips a little bit more, work through the groin dynamic range of motion with that rotation component that we've shot in a previous episode. After we've gone through our thermal, we've got, gone through our active and passive mobility work, we're just gonna incorporate a little bit of just strength-based movement without causing too much damage and using too much energy expenditure from the body. So again, you can't hit every single thing in one day. You have to just pick goals and then throughout your week, you work on the collective goal. So for this example, I've just done a static bear crawl lift. We've shot that before. Just a nice basic core activation, promotes some stability in multiple positions. We'll then proceed into a dumbbell iso hold. Again, real great trigger for the glute. Keys there, we just want to focus on driving the outside toes of both feet into the ground to really fire that glute med. And then we're gonna proceed into some more dynamic drills. So the single leg hinge with the pull, we're just gonna really work on that posterior chain activation and a little bit of that pulling strength and multiple muscle coordination. Then we're just gonna finish with a simple isometric again, just a nice rotation drill with Swiss ball that you're gonna see. And then the last thing we wanna work on, and this is another thing we're identifying is these new younger athletes, they play so much hockey that they tend to lose their ability and their drive to play other sports. So what I like to incorporate into the end is more of an athleticism based component to your warm up slash workout. So again, just like our thermal, this can be as creative as you want. Let's just think outside the box and do anything but hockey. A couple of examples are like reactionary drills, working with partners, change of directions, mirroring drills, anything that just gets you outside that comfort zone and moving in a different way than you would on the ice. Again, into our simple examples too, some five meter accelerations and decelerations 
skates. Again, really great control and explosive output to prime the body for that skate. And then the last one, which is just a whole lot of fun, is running football routes. It's some of our players' favorite things to do. Catch footballs, have fun, play defense and offense against each other, and just really incorporate some fun into our programming while also priming the system to practice. So, today's video was definitely more tip-based and instructional. The example here, like I said, there's no one perfect way. The point of programming is to play with ver independent variables and see how it affects your result of your athlete at the end of every session. So, like I said, this is just a general framework that we want to walk through. A couple key points is make sure that we're not overdoing it and we want to keep that 15 to 20 minute timeline. The longer we draw it on, the longer it's going to get and the less interest you're going to have in this quality of work for this warm up.